What's up, Jen? How you doing? I'm doing well, V. How are you? I'm good. And we have a Samsung TV here, the S90C. And what if I told you you could save a thousand bucks by getting this TV and it might be the steal of the year? We're going to show you some of these features and why I think this might be the case. You going to start unboxing it? Yeah. Show me. All right. So we have a QD OLED. So for those of you who don't know what a QD OLED is, it was created two years ago as an alternative to the typical W OLED where this QD OLED does not have white sub pixels. It gets a little technical, but the gist of it is it just uses blue light and then it changes to different colors and therefore the colors are much more vibrant, but it still has that awesome individual pixel level control. So you can have perfect contrast, you know, you can have perfect whites versus perfect blacks and awesome colors. So it's pretty exciting. You got some feet here. Yeah. Now this year, the second year of this QD OLED, they actually have two models from Samsung. So it's a little confusing. Why would you have two models? But I think it's the same panel. And so this one that's less expensive may be the one that you wanna get. And we're gonna kind of pull this out and show you some differences here. The goodie bag? Yeah, goodie What's bag. What's in the goodie bag? Got the remote and the... Uh... We've got our remote right here, our analog audio cord, and then we've got our power cord. And then of course, some of your um, warranty, guarantee, all that kind of good stuff that you'll never look at. Awesome. Okay, ready? You wanna lift yeah. the top off here? Let's do it. So when you have the, the 77 inch or smaller, we have to take it over the top. Uh, but yeah, I like, I, don't, I like the ones that are 85. You can just open them up and take them off. I like that, it makes me feel a little more comfortable. Yeah, you don't want to have the TV tip, you know, luckily the stand. I give it the little foot, the foot hold. Yeah, let's, let's give it the old tippy test. Yeah, it's kind of tippy, so just be careful when you unbox yours. Now, I think that we take off these end pieces and we use them to kind of like brace the TV. So let's save those two pieces right there. And then if I remember correctly, uh, we want to like kind of flip these little latches right there. There's one in the front right there. If you want to grab it down there too. and then we just pull these uh, little end pieces out and open it up you got it yep. awesome cool and then we can yeah put these two pieces in there yeah much much more stable now i'll get this out of the way yeah okay. oh yeah take that why don't you grab that sucker out first yeah is like another cover plate yeah that is that's right they, they have like a cover plate for this side here that's good i do it or you do it me you she's already got it yeah, and then we just kick that piece out in the front. We got to lift it up a little. I don't want to like, there you go. And that is how you get access to the stand. And now you can just put the stand on with it in the uh, foam packaging, which is actually quite nice because, you know, if you've seen my unboxings over the years, you've seen me lay TVs down every which way and people tell me I shouldn't do it this way or that way. So I like this. Well, I can tell you one thing for sure. What? People on the internet are always going to tell you what you're doing wrong. That is true. Yeah. You are correct about that. Make sure to comment below what we're doing wrong. <laughs> what, yeah, tell us, please. So do we want to get this stand together first? Or you want to pull the plastic off? Right. Let's get this thing done. Come on, what do we got to do? Let's do it. I've never seen a stand like this, so it's very weird. It's first time for everything. It's kind of, it's made of all plastic too. I, I've noticed that. So there's your $1,000 difference. Plastic stand versus metal. We'll see. But I mean, you know, if the TV stands upright, it's not a huge deal how the stand looks as long as it works. But yeah, I don't know. That looks like it's kind of metal. What do you think? Is that metal? Eric, what do you think? Metal? Metal? Fingernail test. Looks like metal, huh? Metal with plastic. So that's interesting. You'd, you'd think that that plastic is like glued to the metal. So how do we feel about that? Hmm. This is for the 77. Wait, this also says 83 inch S90C. Huh, that's interesting. How come we don't have the 83 inch? Well, they don't make it, but that's kind of like foreshadowing. I don't know if anyone else has any kind of proof that there's an 83 inch S90C coming in the works, but they have 77 and then they have 83 inch. So maybe that's next year. And they printed that little stamp knowing it's gonna be for next year. Ooh. But don't hold it against us if that's not the case. It says right there, 77 and 83 inch. Mm, I like that. <laughs> we just made news. So what it says, Jen, is that we got 
to put the two feet in first mm -hmm. in the back there and then snap the th uh, little clips in place. And then it says like, you know, lift it up and put it where you need it. And then after that, it says slide the little base plate under the feet. So that's interesting until you hear it click. Uh, so let's do that. I don't know, it, it kind of seems a little weird, but let's check it out. Let's do it. Let's try it. Okay. I like a little weird. All right. Let me uh, lift the side out and you take the plastic off. You good? On that side? Okay, let's get the other side. Good teamwork. Mm -hmm. The fatty part goes toward the inside, so this is yours. That's yours, this is mine. Um, snap. Well, let's see. Let's see how they work. Oh, push it in and up. Did you get yours? I think so. You won, man. Yeah. It was easier than I made it look like. <laughs> you so. made it. You're making it much more difficult than it needed to be. You know, Feel solid. not a huge deal, but I think obviously there is probably a little cost benefit to making it out of plastic. It, it, you know, it does feel fine, but it, look at it, it's a little weird. I don't know. Maybe this plate will stabilize it, but let's go ahead and do what they say. I think they said uh, lift it out first. I feel like we could just slide this in from the other side now. Should we just do that? Let's see. Doesn't have any like, um, you know, little- Skid proof. Yeah, little skid marks things. <laughs> I love, yeah. I love my skid marks on my base plate. So if we put that in here, it's supposed to slide in place. Here, tip it back a little. Tip the TV back. Mm. Yeah, I don't know about this. Tip it back more. Okay, let it go back down. Yeah, I think that's it right there. I mean. I guess it doesn't look quite as premium as I thought it would. Like you kind of see that little, let's set it up on the table. It's gonna sit on this. So when we take these styrofoam off, it's gonna rest and maybe it'll settle down a little further. You can just take that off, babe. Okay. Or just drop it on my head a few more times. Here. I mean, I could, do no, stop. There you go, you got it. Caesar, help, come on, man. Pick something up. Here you go, Caesar. Caesar, take this. Dude, come on. Take something, man. Come on, dude, help out, man. He's not helping. Oh, yeah. Oh, careful. Oh, oh, oh. Don't knock the TV over, boy. Oh. Woo. All right, so we'll just pull the ends off like we did before. I'll lift up. Ready? Oops. I'm telling Samsung you broke the plastic. Okay. I dare you. All right, does it look any better now, the stand? You can't fit a sound bar because, I mean, it has to, like, sit here. I don't know. Now let's keep going. Not worth dwelling on. All right, let's just set it forward a bit here. All right, one, two, three. Oh, it's so thin. All right, yeah, it is a thin looking TV. I like it. Here, I'll get this. Why don't you be astonished at the thinness? I know, it is. I'm marveling at the thinness. Let's see. So, yeah. I was told that this is a new panel that is sturdier, more durable. I have to say, I, from what I remember last year, it looks like it's a little thicker up here, like a little stronger, and it looks like it's nice and straight. So, I mean, I don't think that's a super huge deal. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of a bend to it. I mean, from way back here, I can't see like it's bent or anything. I think it looks great. Shall we get the stand back here so we can get it up and ever, let everyone see it? I thought you'd never ask. All right, let's do it. You wanna lift it up, Jen? Let's do it. One, two, three. All right, the stand and fall off. Okay, Jen, so good news, bad news. The plastic's already pulled off for you. And who is responsible for that? That's my favorite part. Yeah, I'll have to make some phone calls and find out. We did get this from Samsung, so thanks Samsung for giving us this loaner unit. Check it out. Thank you. But man, yeah, 
the pulling of the plastic is one of the most satisfying parts. I don't even but, know why I'm here. But, you know, since it's off already, we can see that it has a really good anti-reflective properties. There is a little bit of that effect where it kind of spreads it out, but not anything like the QLED TVs that we've seen or the LEDs uh, from a couple brands this year where it kind of mirrors across the whole screen. So OLEDs have typically been really good handling reflections. And now that these TVs are getting brighter and brighter, they also help, you know, decrease that reflection by being so bright. So uh, that's pretty cool. I don't know about this stand. I've liked the Samsung stands in the past, having plastic connected to metal and then kind of, you know, it's a different thing. I, I, I've, I've liked the one that was one metal piece where you can maybe even set the sound bar on here, but now you got things in the way. So it's not ideal, I guess. But again, these are, these are things that you can ask yourself if you can live with. And then on the back, it's a, a really good looking TV. You know, it looks very similar to the traditional OLEDs that we've seen from LG and Sony. So. Samsung's smart to use that. Now this is the difference between the uh, S95C, the one that's more expensive, and this S90C, which is, I said, $1,000 less for the 77 inch, is that this one does not have a One Connect box, Jen. How do you feel about the One Connect box? I do kind of like the One Connect box because then you have everything connected into one spot and you only have one cord coming down from the TV. And then because of that, isn't this also kind of thinner? Yeah, this, well, this one's thicker because all the brains are in this area here. So when you wall mount it, yeah, it's, it's thicker. That uh, S95C looks really cool. It looks like the 8K versions. It has like speakers in the back. It is just a little thicker than this the whole way through. So kind of pros and cons. Now, the one thing is when you hang that S95C on the wall, if you have like your HDMIs and your power outlet already on the wall up there, then it's kind of a problem because you'd have to stick the One Connect box up high, and then it you know defeats the purpose of it looking super thin. So this is the one you'd want if you have a power cord and HDMI is already on the wall, because then you can just run them in here and more or less they look the same. And again, thousand dollars, you save a thousand bucks. It sounds worth it, but I'm interested to see picture quality, how that looks. Is this gonna keep me up at night like it's sunrise? I think so. I think it's yeah. so good. It's about the same as the other ones, but we'll have to turn it on and check it out. So yeah. over here, what do you got, Jen? So on the back here, we do have two USB ports, and then we have a total of four HDMI ports, two on the side, two on the bottom. They are optimized for gaming. What is it? It's 4K at 120, so yeah, next-gen gaming you know, connectivity. And then output number three is the eARC, where you can connect your speakers or sound system to. And then over here, this is for our optical output. We have our LAN, our X-Link, and our antenna. And then up here, we have analog audio out, which is really cool if you wanna connect some headphones to it. And then we do have our 300 by 300 Visa pattern right here for mounting it directly on the wall. And then we have this panel here uh, that covers the HDMI ports. So it looks like we can just put it in there. Uh, you wanna help me hold that? Absolutely. I'm a little nervous, I'm just gonna... All right, there you go. So now a little more uniform on the back, but of course we still have to connect the PS5 and things to this, so we'll take that off in a minute. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like it. Completes the look. Beautiful. And I think the cords can run through here and maybe down here. I don't know. Or maybe it just come. I think it comes out this hole right here and you can clip them on to the, to the leg. So yeah, there were out. some clip managements. Cool. Clip managements. All about <laughs> That's it. That's what we're calling them. Clip management thingies. That's the technical term. Doodads. Jen, let's get the remote. Check it out. Fire this bad boy up. Let's do it. Okay, so we've got the remote right here. Now, Brandon thinks this is a little bit too small, but for my little hands, I love this remote. I think it's perfect for me. So we've got the power button up here, the directional pad. We've got your back button, your home button, and then we've got your channel and your volume buttons, and then some of your specialty, um, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Samsung um, TV, which has some really great programming. I actually like Baywatch is one of my favorites, and then uh, Prime Video. This is the Samsung Solar Cell Remote, so it just charges with the sun, but you can also charge it with the USB port right here on the bottom. I just feel it's a little bit too dainty, but you know what? Take your little dainty hands and turn that sucker on. Let's do it. You want me to pull it? Yeah, pull it. Boom. Wow, that looks so cool. Let's get this thing set up. Yeah, it looks great. But I heard some people said that maybe I didn't have a whole lot of energy, so I've got an idea. I'm gonna pass the remote over to Brandon and I'll be right back. All right. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Things app.
back. Nice, look at that, you brought gifts. I added your half pump of mocha, your five sugars, and I didn't have them stir it, so you can have all the pleasure. I don't think it's done right. Let me go get you we'll, more sugar. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. We got the whole TV set up. Thanks for the coffee, that was a nice surprise. Of course. And I actually wanna thank ShipStation for sponsoring this video. We do these unboxings so often that setup can be quite tedious. Luckily, the Samsung setup is pretty streamlined, so it's much faster. And if you own a business, ShipStation can save time by automating your shipping and returns through their simple dashboard. They also keep costs down with their industry-leading discounts, which are up to 84% off UPS and USPS rates. You can automate shipping tasks, print labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment. I would have loved to have these when we were shipping TV mounts back in the day one by one, which was such a tedious process that took way too much time on a daily basis. If you've ever created hundreds of shipping labels in a single day, there's no doubt you'd sign up for ShipStation and never look back. ShipStation easily integrates anywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. And if you're on the fence about trying ShipStation, they're currently offering a two month free trial when you use my code installer. So spend more time growing your business when you automate shipping tasks with ShipStation and join the over 130,000 companies that have already done the same by going to shipstation.com installer today to sign up for your free 60 day trial. That's shipstation.com installer for your free 60 day trial today. All right, so first we wanna go over the operating system. Of now, course. we've had the Tizen OS for a long time, so we're quite familiar with it. A ton of apps. Again, we use like the YouTube TV one and some of the Prime Video, you know, Disney Plus, all that. And then one of them we really like is the Samsung TV Plus. Yeah, remember we used to watch all those Kitchen Nightmares and Baywatch, good yeah. stuff. I mean, we used to have, you know, one of the TVs and it would just automatically prompt to those channels. Mm -hmm. So it, there's always some good stuff on there you have you know, just entertainment value. You got news and sports and all kinds of stuff. So a lot of fun channels. And if you don't have cable, it's just great to get that for free, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then in addition to that, you also have some other modes now, you know, on the side here, you can go up into the game hub where you can do some streaming. You can actually stream games without a console. So we have the uh, Xbox Ultimate Pass. And so, you know, the kids have used that to just stream onto these uh, Samsung TVs without actually having the console. Now it's a little laggy. Remember the kids were saying it's, it's just a little laggy, but that depends on your internet speed. So if you have fast internet speed, I'm sure it'll get better over time, but still it's pretty cool to have that uh, and have the opportunity to, to stream games as well as great connectivity for uh, games in general. And then we have ambient mode, which I think is pretty cool. It kind of looks like you have artwork on the wall. It's not quite as good as the frame, but it still gives you some nice options of stationary pictures and even some moving. But do we really want that in an OLED, Brandon? Yeah, I don't know how many people are gonna like really wanna leave an OLED, which is like an organic you know, situation. So you have a shelf life, whether it's five, 10, 15 years. You might just not want to have that on all the time if you're not using it, you know, so that's a good point. And then, of course, you have your connectivity so you can see what's connected, what's not. And then the one thing that I wanted to mention is the multi view. We've we've enjoyed. I used to really like picture in picture back in the day. We had one of those big Hitachi like floor standing uh, rear projection TVs that could do that. Super awesome for watching sports. And again, you know, you can go and watch like a YouTube TV on one side and an actual like uh, HDMI source on the other, so playing video games or whatever, or you can connect your phone up there and you know scroll through your phone while you're also watching something. So pretty cool. That's how you landed me. Oh yeah, <laughs> football. So then we get into the actual SDR footage like YouTube TV like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And man, I noticed this really bright right off the bat. We had to go in and kind of mess with some settings. I did do the intelligent mode at first. So I actually took it off that because you know, how can we tell really how good this TV is if it may change depending upon what the room conditions are. So we just wanna turn that off for our sake, but people can use that. And then in the motion settings, I kinda, uh, you know, change that a bit. So it's a little bit smoother motion. You can manipulate those as you need. And I actually like to have the contrast enhance on. Uh, I know some people may not like that for, you know, it to be very accurate, but it, wow, it really pops when you have that on. And then lastly, making it a little bit warmer in the color is how we like to watch it because it just looks a little too blue otherwise. So what do you think of how it looks right off the bat? 
Yeah, definitely really bright. I mean, this is going to keep me up for sure in the middle of the night thinking the sun's up. Um, but yeah, it was kind of weird on one of the things that we just showed on some of the football highlights. The motion was a little bit funky. It was made it really hard for my eyes to really focus in on that. Yeah, I didn't even tell her about that. This is something that with this series of TV, that's kind of the only thing that I've really had to talk about as a negative is that for some reason, the motion looks a little bit weird on stuff that is either low bandwidth or low resolution like this YouTube TV. It just gets a little herky-jerky in the motion. Now, I don't see that a ton like when other people are reviewing it, so I don't know. I mean, I have seen some people say that, but very small problem, not a big deal. Overall, I think this upscales better than the QLEDs uh, from Samsung. I'm not sure what the difference is, but it just looks a little bit better. I noticed that in the Samsung TV channels too. It was pretty sharp. Yeah. So overall, you're probably fine with the SDR, cable, all that. I don't know with YouTube TV if that's just an issue that we have, you know, but either way, let's move on. And getting to HDR now, Avatar The Way of Water just came out today. So we can actually look at that. Yeah, awesome. And it, I mean, it looks awesome. It, you know, fantastic, um, you know, highlights. Perfect black level, so you have just, it looks so cool. But Brandon, there's no Dolby Vision. Uh, yes, so the Dolby Vision, again, Samsung doesn't have Dolby Vision, so if that's a big deal for you, then you know this isn't the TV for you. I don't think it's the reason I would not buy a Samsung TV. There's all kinds of different reasons. I think that the HDR10 Plus that they use looks fantastic, uh, and I've never had an issue with HDR on Samsung QLEDs and now the QD OLEDs. They do have their own, you know, active and static tone mapping options now, which some people complain that it, they weren't able to get it very accurate. So now that static tone mapping is helpful for that. And then when you have it in the active mode, it makes it super bright and crazy like we like it. So I think overall HDR looks fantastic, Dolby Vision or not. Yeah, this looks pretty amazing. And we saw this in the theaters too. Yeah, and it looks better than in the theaters because they don't even have HDR in the theaters. This is fantastic. And my popcorn's better. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> hey, Brandon, you know what time it is? What time is it? It's time to hit them with some high quality gaming footage. Let's do it. With Lego Hobbit. Lego Hobbit? Oh, yeah. It's time for 11 Z's. <laughs> wow. All right, let's do it. All right, Jen, while you're kicking butt here, I'm going to let them know about the Samsung gaming features, which are pretty robust. You do have four HDMI ports that are 4K at 120. I mean, you have VRR, you have all that kind of stuff. The game bar is pretty awesome too. You just hold down the play pause button and it'll kind of ruin your, you can't really see what you're doing now, but you can see all kinds of different features at the bottom. Um, you know, obviously gonna have this on temporarily, most likely. Uh, you can see your frame rate, if it's on HDR, VRR, all kinds of stuff. And you can have some minor settings Increase the size of the mini map if you need to. So if you're a gamer, this is one of the best TVs you could possibly get. Okay, so here's what I think. The stand isn't our favorite. You know, we can't fit a sound bar under there, but if it's on the wall, not a big deal, right? Right. Okay, and we have a little bit of motion issues when we watch YouTube TV, but most people should be fine with that. And if you need the One Connect box, then you're gonna be forced to buy the S95C, which is $1,000 more. But this is less expensive than a lot of OLED TVs, and it's a very good performing TV. Awesome gaming, super bright, amazing colors, and I think it literally has the same panel and looks just like the S95C, which is more expensive from Samsung. So, I don't know, I like this TV, I think it's awesome. And traditional OLEDs like the LG C3 and the Sony A80L are not gonna be able to get to this level of brightness. You know, the LG has really good gaming features though, so I, you know, it's gonna be kinda crazy. So I'm pretty much sold that this is gonna be one of the absolute best TVs and deals of the year. So that's some pretty high praise coming from B, but we wanna know what you think. Is this the TV for you or do you have another OLED in mind? Let us know in the comments below because we're gonna have another full review of this TV coming soon. And if you have a great comment, we'll go ahead and shout you out in that video. And while you're commenting, check out the TV quiz in the description. It'll ask you questions like, what kind of content are you viewing? What are your room conditions? And how far you're sitting from the TV? And it'll pop out a couple of different options that'll be best for your conditions. And if you're unsure of if you wanna get this one or the S95C, here's the unboxing for that. And then here's the LG C3, check them out. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.